Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math lesson today. Here's the problem we're going to be going over today. Um, I've done a few problems kind of like this the last couple weeks on my channel, um, but I just want to show you one more example, which is using the limit definition of a derivative to find the derivative of a function with a square root. So this here, this limit, this represents the derivative of a function. Right, so if you have some f of x and you're trying to find f prime of x, which is just the derivative, you can use this limit definition to find the derivative. So what we're going to do is find the derivative of square root of 1 plus 2x using this limit definition. So the first thing you want to do when you're using the limit definition to find the derivative of a function, the first thing you want to do is figure out this piece here, this f of x plus h. So first, let's just kind of figure out what that is over here. And then we'll use that in this equation. So to figure out f of x plus h, given an f of x, actually, let's write this over here. All you have to do is go to your function f of x and go look for all the x's in it and replace the x with x plus h. So basically, all this notation is saying is go to your function f and whatever the input is, just replace that input with all the stuff here in parentheses. So we're just gonna go to this function, which is the square root of one plus two x, and we're gonna take our x and replace it with x plus h. And the one thing you wanna keep in mind is it's important to put this x plus h in parentheses, because whatever operations were being done to x now need to be done to this entire x plus h. So as a result, this two is gonna distribute into those parentheses leaving us with 1 plus 2x plus 2h, right? The 2 is going to be multiplied by the x, and then it's going to be multiplied by the h. So now our f of x plus h is going to be the square root of 1 plus 2x plus 2h. So now we're going to take this and this, and we're going to put them in here and here, and see what we get then. So doing that is going to give us, so instead of f of x plus h minus f of x, we're going to get this function here, which is f of x plus h. So we're going to get the square root of 1 plus 2x plus 2h and then we need to put minus f of x which is this function here so minus the square root of 1 plus 2x a general rule of thumb to keep in mind is when you do this minus f of x to put the f of x the entire f of x in parentheses in this case since everything that is included in f of x is kind of trapped within this square root the parentheses aren't really going to do anything here this minus would essentially just be distributed to the square root so now we know that this limit here is what f prime of x is. So let's get rid of these and we'll kind of work on with this. So the general pattern as discussed in the Calculus Lifesaver by Adrian Banner, which is a really good book, I definitely recommend checking it out. There's a link in the description, is to basically multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by the conjugate of what you have on your numerator. So this is a good trick to keep in mind whenever you're doing this limit definition to find the derivative of a function with a square root is you're always gonna end up with this square root minus some square root. What you wanna do is multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by the conjugate, which is just the square root of one plus two x plus two h plus the square root of one plus two x. So basically all you're doing is changing this minus sign to a plus, and this would be known as the conjugate of what's on your numerator. So basically if we multiply this entire fraction by the conjugate over the conjugate, this fraction here equals one, right? The same thing divided by the same thing is always gonna be one. So if we multiply this fraction by this fraction, we're not actually changing its value because we're just multiplying it by one. But doing that is actually gonna have some really nice effects because basically what'll happen is when we multiply this numerator times this numerator, the square roots are basically just gonna cancel each other out. If you were to FOIL that out, you know, FOIL out this times this, so having these square roots minus each other, if you FOIL that out, you would see that that would essentially just simplify down to the square roots canceling each other out. And you would just be left with your first term minus your second term with the square roots canceled out because basically it takes advantage of the difference of squares which says that if you have you know a minus b 
times a plus b, that's going to factor out or foil out into a squared minus b squared. So here our a and b were square roots, so when we use the difference of squares, it essentially just results in a square root squared minus a square root squared. The square roots and the squared canceled out, and you're just left with what was inside your square roots. And then again, be sure to put this whole thing in parentheses because this minus sign is gonna to have to distribute to both of those terms. And then remember, we also have to multiply the denominator by this same thing as well. So now let's just go ahead and simplify our numerator by distributing this negative sign and then combining like terms. So first this minus sign will go to there, so we'll get minus one, and then we're gonna get minus two x. And then our denominator is gonna stay the same for now. And now let's think about combining like terms on our numerator. We have one and then a minus one, so those are gonna cancel. And then we have a two x and a minus two x, so those are gonna cancel. And all we're left with on our numerator now is a two h. So now notice we have an h on the denominator times a bunch of stuff, and then we have an h on the numerator times two, but these h's are just gonna cancel now. So now we're just gonna be left with all this square root, this you know initial conjugate that we dealt with a couple steps ago, all on the denominator and then just a two on the numerator. So that was exactly what we were going for with all this, was to get something that just had an h times something on the numerator so that the h on the numerator would cancel with this h on the denominator because that h on the denominator is what was causing us problems with evaluating this limit back in the beginning because if we just plug in zero for h that causes you to divide by zero which you can't do but now to evaluate this limit we can just plug in zero for h because doing it isn't going to give us a zero on the denominator it's going to give us something that we can actually deal with so if we plug in zero for h, there's really only one h, which is right here. That's just gonna give us two times zero. And then having done that means that we've evaluated this, the limit. So now we can just simplify this with the zero plugged in for h. And in fact, really all that's gonna do is make two times zero is zero. So we're just gonna get one plus two x plus zero, which doesn't really do anything. So we just have the square root of one plus two x plus the square root of one plus two x. Since these are the same term, we can add them together, giving us two times the square root of one plus two x. And now we have a two on the denominator, a two on the numerator, those are gonna cancel. And we're just gonna be left with one over the square root of one plus two x, which again is equivalent to f prime of x. And this is gonna be our final answer. So hopefully you found this video helpful. There's a playlist here with some more examples like this if you need some more practice. Please give my channel a subscribe, like the video. It's a huge help so I can keep making more videos like this. Thank you and see you next time.